Hey, it's Deepam. Welcome to my backyard. Welcome to my river. I feel very fortunate to be here in these times, to be able to sit in the sunshine. What I'd like to offer you today is a wake-up body meditation, a way to vitalize your mornings in a very relaxed way. And I talked earlier about the deepening of how we normally consider um, to be relaxation, a deepening of that process, how much more we can relax. Uh, the body, the body is, is only able to be in present time. The mind, as Osho said, is not able ever to be in present time. It's always either in the future, planning, or in the past, remembering. It's almost never able to sit in presence, which is what meditation is all about, is to calm the mind. And so many meditation practices are focused on the body because the body can only be here right now. So that's what we need more than anything right now, is to be here right now. Otherwise, uh, we freak out, right? <laughs> or we get sad, or anyway. So I would like to just lead you through a wake-up meditation which um, starts when, you, when you're waking up, you want to vitalize the body. And this is a way to do it in a very relaxed way. So in the mornings, we start with our body scan from the feet up to wake up the body. And in the evenings, we start from the head and work our way down to relax the body and to settle in. So if you would like to take part, I would uh, encourage you to close your eyes. And if um, you're not comfortable with closing your eyes, you can just leave them soft and unfocused. Settle into your chair or your bed or your yoga mat, comfortable so that you can deeply relax without having anything pressing into you or having to hold your body in any way. So if it's a wake up one, perhaps you're still lying in bed and that's wonderful. So begin just by connecting with the breath. The breath is the best way to ride into the body, ride it like a boat in riding your awareness, your focus with the breath down into various parts of the body. So it's becoming aware of the breath and the different sensations in the body that breath brings. And then float that awareness, that focus down into your feet. And we're going to go really deeply into the feet, beginning with the big toes. Just go right inside the big toes. You can do them both at the same time. It's amazing how our minds can do that, how our bodies can respond to our mind suggestion even more than we know, even more than we imagine our bodies can respond to a suggestion or even just the attention that we give it. So go into those big toes, beginning with the skin, the stretch of skin, and then deep into, through the muscle, the little pads of fat, the bottoms of the toes, the tips of the toes, the sides of the toes, under the nail beds, and then deeper into the joints, the little tiny joints that are there, the bones, in the human foot, there are 26 bones. So there are lots of little joints and connections. Uh, and then just offer your toes the opportunity to, to relax, to soften, and to see what happens. Notice if they kind of light up. They become a little bit more spacious just by noticing. And then when you're ready, you can move along into the second toes. 
and scan through. What do you notice? Is it dense? Is it light? Is there comfort or discomfort? And ask those questions and just notice no need to change anything. Just by your own noticing those toes kind of come alive in their own way. The bones, deeper than the bones, inside the bones. Maybe you're even aware of the pulse inside those toes, the blood moving through. And invite those little toes just to soften and relax. And they probably already have. And then move to that middle toe on each of your feet. And if you feel to move them, if you're moved to move them, by all means do that so you can get a, a clearer sense, a clearer response from those toes. Again, see if you can feel the pulse, what's happening inside that toe. under the nail bed, the tip of the toe, the sides of the toes, the base of the toe where it connects to the foot. Noticing maybe some sounds in the background and just let them float away and return your attention to the toes now we're moving on to the fourth toe, checking in. What does that toe have to tell you? What does it have to offer you? What does your attention, your awareness give to the toe? When you're ready, you can move your focus, your attention onto the baby toes. And especially here, the little tender tips of those toes, the ones that have been stubbed and bruised, and the ones that help you keep your balance. Are you aware of the bone? The way that the joints connect to the foot. And all together, see if you can let all of the toes just soften, letting them go, letting them go. And becoming aware of where the toes meet the foot that pad of fat that protects the delicate bones inside the foot. Notice the connection that the sole of the foot has to the outside world inside your sock or your shoe, your slipper, the floor, or where it's tucked up under you, maybe against your own body. And just notice that connection. And the feet are such grounding instruments that if you're feeling freaked out or anxious or a little spaced out, it's really good just to very, very simply bring your focus down into your feet and immediately you're grounded. Just noticing where your feet are, being in them, I find it works better than putting a hat on <laughs> to ground yourself. And just explore along the sides of the feet, the outside of the foot. Seeing if your awareness, that, that focus, that attention along the sides of your foot 
makes it feel a little more alive, a little more awake, a little more vital. The arch of the foot, the stretch of skin, all those points, those points that are connected to everywhere in the body, to the organs, the flow of chi or energy, all those points. Maybe you feel them light up as you scan over the sole of your foot. And then I invite you to go deeper into the foot, all those little bones and muscles, ligaments, connective tissue, all the work that they do, how they support you and all the things that are in place to keep you functioning, to keep you upright, to keep you supported. And there's so much going on in the feet. And all we're asking now is just to pay attention what's going on without judgment. You might notice some discomfort, maybe some pain. Just let that be there. Often what happens if we just let discomfort be there, it abates, it just softens and lets go. We're not fighting with it anymore. We're just allowing it to be there as part of being embodied. And the sensation might stay, but the relationship to it really, really eases. And in this time, that's what we're asking for, is ease. We have so many challenges now just to be. And if we can go about them with ease and equanimity, it's going to be a whole lot easier. So we take that equanimity into our ankles. You might want to flex your feet, just feel the movement of the ankles. And then let it settle, let it relax, let it open. And then slowly, slowly bring your attention up the shins, the shin bones, tibia, fibula, gastrocnemius doesn't matter what they're called, but just feeling them for now, feeling the, the thick muscle of the calves, the strong muscle. Two of them actually, two muscles that run down from the back of the legs, right down into the soleus, the Achilles heel, Achilles, sorry, Achilles tendon. Let's see if you can get a sense of those two muscles running along the back of your legs without actually doing anything. Just focusing there for a moment. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to be but here. And then we come into the knees all the bones and tendons, how this little kneecap moves with no bony attachment, helps us kneel, walk, squat, sit, and stand, and dance. And you might be aware of the potential movement there, a lot of us have some difficulties in our knees, especially as we age. Just acknowledging whatever sensation is there and letting that sensation, if just let it get bigger. Really let that sensation, whatever sensation you're feeling in your knees, just let it expand and grow and watch what happens. Watch the magic that happens. 
if you just allow it, allow it to be there as big as it needs to be. No barriers, no tightening, no rigidity. Just allowing, allowing, allowing. And you might be surprised what happens. The same with anything, the same with emotional pain as with physical pain. If you don't fight it, if you don't fight it, if you just say yes, yes, this is what's happening. Suffering just dissolves. Your relationship to sensation shifts instantly the moment you say a wholehearted yes. So moving your attention up your thighs, these long, strong bones, these femurs, they're the longest bones in the body. And just check out the bones. What's around the bones? What's inside the bones? And see if you can let your bones soften. Inside the thighs, along the outside, those places where so many of us roll really painful foam rollers <laughs> along the along these um, tensor fascia lata. Really just hurts. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why we do that. <clears throat> Apparently it's good for us. But right now we're not hurting our bodies. We're just checking in. What's going on? How does it feel? Maybe you can see inside your legs. Maybe there's a sound or a color. What's the texture? Is it dense or is it light? Just an inquiry. It's not supposed to be any other way than it is right now. And how are the legs sitting? How are they resting? If you can let the weight of the legs surrender to whatever is supporting them, whether it's your mat or your mattress or the chair, the floor, just surrender the weight, let them go. As we move on to the buttocks, and how they're pressing into your chair or your mat, and let them soften, deepen, deepen, deepen the softening. And if that's a hard place to get to, what you can do is you can tighten up, tighten, tighten. We're really good at tightening up and then let go. Oh, such a relief, such a release. Letting go and then see if you can let go even deeper. Oh. Your pelvis, your lower belly, your genitals, letting them open, soften. Nowhere to go but here. Let them go. And see what you find. Be an explorer. Be interested. Be curious. What's inside my pelvis? So many stories, yeah. So many assaults, so many pains, so many pleasures, so many joys, so much sweetness. What residue, what do you feel right now in this moment? Let's see if we can just let, let everything open like a flower. Let the whole pelvic floor release. It's okay. It's good. Maybe you feel some emotion. You can let that come too. This is your body, your experience. And then moving along the spine, the sacrum, this bony bony structure that I always think is shaped like a heart. 
So much is connected there. So much depends on the strength of this, this heart-shaped bone, the sacrum, the sacred sacrum. Letting that bone relax, letting it surrender its weight, softening. And then moving up the spine, all these vertebra, vertebrae, all the little spongy discs in between. Again, this is a place as you explore, as you go one by one up the spine. Many people have had a lot of issues, so many of us see chiropractors to get ourselves put back in order, put back in place. Get our heads screwed back on, right? And what do you find there? Is there comfort? Is there discomfort? Just check it out. Where do you feel tension? Where do you feel ease? And where you feel that tension, see if you can direct your, your attention to that place and allow it to soften, to say, yes, I hear you, I feel you. Yeah. Nowhere to go, nowhere to go, just here. And then you can tune in to, oh, goodness. <laughs> the outside sounds. Oh, I just let them go away, go away. And return our attention to this, this, our bodies. These long, strong muscles that support the spine, that support the torso, run along the spine, the erector spinae. These amazing muscles that keep us upright. And inviting them to soften, just to let go. And deeper still. Again, tune into the pulse that's running through the entire body. But right now, the pulse that you feel in the back. In the back of your body, the whole back of your body. And go deeper into the organs now. Let's check out the organs, the reproductive organs, the bladder, appendix if you've got one, reproductive organs if you still have them or maybe just the space where they used to be. And just show them some love, some attention, some focus. And say yes, however you find them. Just give them a yes. And notice how when you give them that yes, they immediately light up. Just kind of this feeling of expansion, perhaps. The intestines, oh, they work, they work, and they work, and they work. The small and the large. Maybe you can tune into what they're actually doing right now. That takes some doing. And generally, we're not aware of body parts unless they hurt. So I'm inviting you to explore and investigate them when they, when they don't hurt or when they are not working hard in a way that calls our attention. So just focus in, focus in, belly, belly muscles, intestines. 
kidneys. With fluids moving through the kidneys. Notice, go deeper. Give them a big yes. A big hello. Maybe you can get inside the kidneys. Check that out. It's happening in there. The walls of the kidneys. Sometimes when I get inside an organ, it's like I imagine I'm putting out my hands just to feel the inside, to feel the walls of those organs. Maybe they're spongy, maybe hard, maybe some scarring. What's it like in there? Your body. Hello, body. And then the lungs. Oh my gosh, the lungs. With or without us, with or without our will or our invitation, they go on breathing for us. And right now, for some of us, this is probably the most challenging thing to do is to breathe. We need help. We need ventilators. We need puffers. So just go inside inside all these little branches and tubes and they're like they're like trees inside like trees that's why it's good if you can to be around trees during this time they are a reflection of our lungs they nourish our lungs they nourish everything but particularly our lungs and you might want to take a nice deep breath and just feel those lungs expand and fall back. Feeling the bottom, feeling the top. <coughs> a little gratitude might be in order for the lungs. All the, the tissue. What do you find? What's the texture? What's the flavor? What's the sound inside your lungs? Pretty noisy in mine. And then let's take our attention to our hearts, our beating sweet hearts. Maybe it's beating regularly, maybe it's irregular. Maybe it pauses and then has to catch up with itself. The four chambered heart. Yeah. Let's get a sense of the blood, the blood, oxygen, all that's moving inside the heart, pumping in, pumping out. There was an experiment done many years ago where they took tissue samples from two different hearts that were beating, that were pulsing at different tempos, and they put them together in a petri dish, and instantly they started to beat at the same rhythm, the same pulse beat. And I actually don't know if that story is true. I had a teacher who played a little bit with the truth, but I love it anyway. I love the story. I keep it because whether it's metaphorical or actual, it works. When we touch each other, even if it's not physical touch, even if it's just like this, our hearts begin to beat with the same pulse, that intention. So go in, go into your heart. Maybe you can feel the universal heart there. Maybe not. It's okay. Doesn't matter. Just feeling your own sweet heartbeat brings you into the present right now, which is all there is. That's all there is. This moment. And the heart knows it. When you're ready,
ready, you can bring your attention up through the throat. Feel the, the spine, the last seven vertebrae of the spine moving through your neck. It's the thing you can touch at the very front of your throat. You can feel the front of your spine right there. All these muscles that support the, whatever our head weighs, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, I don't know, sometimes it feels like 100 pounds. <laughs> so feel the weight of your head. Feel how your neck, your throat, your spine supports the weight of your head. And see if you can let it. The head is the hardest thing to let go of. To let go of the weight. It's easiest, obviously, if you're lying down, you can just let the head relax. Let the weight be supported by whatever it is that's under you, the pillow or the mat. Just let it go. You might want to bring your chin down a little bit. Our tendency is to kind of tip our chin back and let the head fall back. But see if you can let the weight of the head go with a straighter spine. A slightly tucked, but not not tense, chin. And if there's any tension that you find, just release that and let your head fall however it wants to fall. In my massage practice, that's what I found is the most challenging for people to let go of is their head. Not because they, they're resistant, it's just... It's really hard to let go of your head, let go of your thoughts, let go of your will, let go of your control, let it go. Just let it go for now. And we'll come back to the head, but first let's slide our attention down over the shoulders. Oh, the shoulders, the shudders, as my friend Isana calls them and let them go. Let them surrender their weight to whatever is supporting them. Let them slide down into the bones. Oh. On the shoulder, there's a lovely socket in there that's a head of the Humerus is a ball, bony ball, fits into the shoulder girdle. And again, many of us have had difficulties with our shoulders, with the rotator cuff, injuries, whether you play tennis or do anything repetitive, the shoulders are at risk. So just show them some love. Get right in there. We're not fixing anything right now. We're just relaxing and just saying yes to whatever it is we find in there. And letting your attention slide down the upper arms, muscles, how the muscle attaches to the bone, how the bone attaches to the joints. Again, see if you can let your bones soften. Just let them soften. There's always a deeper place. We think we relax. There's always a place to let go even more. Until we're just jello. And the elbows. Checking out the joints. The veins the blood flow, how the breath can invigorate and enliven even something as far away as the hands, the forearms. Yeah. And just letting them go. And the hands I led you through, or I led some people through, <laughs> whoever watched the video, uh, through a... Um, a mas hand massage. But now I just ask to go into the wrist, the palms of the hands, 
You might want to give your hands a little stretch, a little clench. Let them stretch, stretching out the fingers. Maybe giving them a little shake or not. Maybe you just want to stay with the deep, deep relaxation, allowing the hands to rest on whatever is supporting them. And just giving each finger your attention. Starting with the thumb, scanning inside and out from the skin to the marrow. Moving along the inner thumb and up into the first finger, the index finger, the pointer finger, and checking that out. What's going on in there? Those of us who write or type or give massages, this finger is very active. Or knit or sew or cook, or chop, the fingers do so much. Maybe now they're not able or allowed to reach out and touch someone. There's nothing stopping you from touching yourself. And moving your attention into the middle finger, the power finger. Noticing how the skin stretches and the bones, the little muscles, 27 bones in the hand. Up into the nail bed, fingertip. Down again, into the ring fingers, checking them out. What's going on in there? And if your attention flags, just call it back. Just come on back to the body. Come on back to this present precious moment that will never be again. Just this moment. Giving yourself this moment to be with your own sweet body that served you so well all these years through illness, through injury, some of us childbirth, it's danced us, made love, experienced pleasure, all of the things that we have available to us as embodied creatures. Without these bodies, we wouldn't have the opportunity to experience all these things, pain, joy, pleasure, despair, disappointment, delight. It's all available to us when we don't have a body. Gone. So let's do this. Let's go into the baby finger. What's there? What's there? What do you find along the sides of the finger, inside the finger? What kind of story? What kind of sound? What's the light like in there? Is it dense or light? In the palms. All our lives displayed there. If you know how to read the signs. Backs of the hands. The veins. Can you feel the veins? You can see these veins in the backs of our hands and, and recognize that blood is moving along those veins, keeping us alive, keeping us vital. Yeah, and then you can sweep your attention back up the arms, stopping wherever your interest is captured. And up. Up the neck, up the back of the head, 
the skull. Oh my goodness. Feel the skull. Maybe you can maybe you can even feel the hair where it, the follicles of hair in your scalp. Maybe you can feel that. The way if you have hair, not all of us have hair. Maybe you can feel the hair not just how it's moving on your face or along the back of your neck, but the actual hair itself. Imagine that you could. Imagine that you could bring your focus, bring your attention, actually feel what's happening inside the hair. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's your hair. And then coming back to the skull and how the, the skull and the the, the scalp meet, that space, that space between the scalp and the skull, that membrane where the cerebral spinal fluid flows, and cranial sacral, and practitioner tunes in to the movement of this, this sac that actually envelops the skull, runs down through the spine and moves the whole body in its own rhythm. There's so many rhythms in the body. There's the pulse, there's the breath, there's this craniosacral pulse, all working, all working to keep us here, to keep us alive. What about your brain? You get a sense of your brain inside this bony structure of the skull all the little synapses and connections and lobes, this beehive, this control center. Just check it out. What do you find? Is it dense? Is it squishy? What's the texture? What's the sound? What's it feel like in there? And then bringing your attention into your face. This face, this is where we could really feel the tension, especially in the forehead, between the eyes, the eyebrows. And just see if you can soften those places. Just let them go slack all around the eyes. Let the eyeballs rest, let them rest. Let them get heavy. The temples, and the cheeks. Let the cheeks sag. The mouth, the lips. Let the lips soften. All the muscles around the mouth. And inside the mouth, Letting the tongue relax, letting it be heavy, 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 heavy. Letting the jaw just hang a bit, the space between the teeth. Just notice the jaw, notice the teeth. There's a muscle, the masseter muscles that hold the jaw in place. They are the shortest and strongest muscles in the body. Let's see if you can get a sense of those muscles, how they clench and release. You're speaking, you're chewing, yelling, kissing, masseter muscles. Look the sides, the sides of your face, right under your cheekbones, right in front of your ears there. Those muscles that hold the jaw in place. <sighs> and so I invite you, as we've finished our little journey through the body, just to take a couple of breaths, maybe one nice deep breath, and then hold it at the top of the breath a little longer than you might normally. And then when you let go, let it out like a sigh. Oh. And letting the whole body 
drop its weight into whatever is supporting it, be it a chair, a table, floor, mattress, just let the weight be supported. Trust your spine, trust the ground, trust the earth, trust yourself. And now you are fully awake. And thank you so much for sharing this journey through the body with me. I'll be back. I'll be back with the journey through the body, taking you down into sleep. For now, I wish you deep relaxation. <laughs>